Yeah, the other topic that we're going to do today, so you can bring it up on Moodle, but um, I will show you the exercise on the screen as well. What I will do is we're just going to spend the time in class to do it. Um, so for the exam, you will see, you will be given questions in a sense that you will have to uh, derive certain posterior, for example, but it might be in a setup that you never saw it before, like not in class. So this exercise today is here to help you, um, it's here to help you to see like what, what would it be like? Not necessarily this one, of course, but what if I give you a new situation that you never saw before, but you should be able to um, derive what you're asked to do. So uh, the document is on Moodle, so it's easier for you to read if you bring that up. Uh, but let me give you the uh, background information. So the deep sampler we covered in class was for the two parameter normal model, right? Both of them are unknown. But give sampler, the algorithm itself, can work for any two parameter model or even more parameter models. So in this class, in this exercise, we're looking at uh, the Poisson, or like I should say, gamma, gamma Poisson. So what I mean by this is, remember the gamma Poisson conjugate that we derived in class? You have a sampling model to be um, Poisson, which is in equation one here. And the only parameter, this is a one parameter model in a sense that the only parameter in the sampling density is lambda. Okay, that's the only unknown. So we give a gamma prior to it, and we showed in class that day that you can come to a gamma posterior. Okay, so that's what we did in class last time. So the new change here, so um, I should just mention uh, the final gamma posterior is in this class. Okay. All right, so the new setup here is that now, suppose, so remember at that time, lambda is given this gamma AB, and the A values and B values, we just want to give it, like give certain values to it when we're doing the inference. But now the change here is that I'm letting A equals to one, which is fixed, but I'm assuming that B is unknown, okay? And I'm giving an extra prior distribution for this B. What I'm giving it to now is this gamma one, one. So there are two parameters now in this model. The data is still all of the y's, but we have this lambda in the Poisson density, but also this b, which is what the um, uh, prior gamma prior for lambda has. So equations three through five is the complete model that I'm giving to you right now. So equation three is the sampling density. You have y1 through yn, they're iid Poisson. And lambda, so lambda given b, you can think of this as the prior of lambda given b, and we know that it's gamma 1b. Okay. And one new thing here, which is adding more complexity or in some way flexibility, because I might not know about b, I want to make inference about it, I don't want to fix it. And what I do is I give a gamma 1, 1 prior to it. So now this is the complete model. The final question is to derive the full conditional posterior distribution for lambda and b. Okay. So that's the final goal. But uh, in today's class, I just break it down for you so you know how to do it step by step. So step one, write out the likelihood function. So now there are two unknown. So you should write the likelihood function in terms of lambda and beta. So lambda and b. And step two is write out the joint prior distribution. So we write lambda and B together. And step three is write out the joint posterior. And then the last step, as you will see on the next page, is to derive the full conditional posterior distribution for the two parameters separate. Okay. So um, I will leave the screen, I think, on this page. But if you have... Um, Computer, you can keep looking at the remaining, but um, I will give you time to work on this, and then in class we will talk about the strategy of solving problems. Like this. Think about it. Maybe link connect to what we talked about so far. The full conditional posterior distribution again, uh, just to mention this really quick, is that the full conditional posterior distribution for lambda should be given everything, including the data and the other parameters. Okay, so that's why you see it here. 
at the end of the day, you will have to show lambda given everything else. Okay? So that's our definition of full conditional. And the full conditional posterior for B will be given data and lambda. So keep those in mind when you're working through the exercise. And I'll walk around to answer specific questions, and then towards the end, uh, maybe 10 minutes, we're going to show the um, solutions in class. But after class today, I will also upload the solutions to, to Moodle so you can check if you can get it correct. So a couple of comments really quick. If you're working on the likelihood function, you will see that even though we write, I think, lambda and B together, but the density, the sampling density is only equation three, which is Poisson lambda. Okay? So you might not see any B in there. Okay, so that might be one thing you get a little bit confused about. Uh, you just go back to the sampling density, which is the Poisson, and it only has this lambda unknown parameter. So that will show up in the likelihood. A B might not show up in the likelihood, just because it's set up. Okay. So that's one. And when you go to step two, uh, you write the joint prior distribution of lambda and B together. So you see that you are given the equation four and five, and five is a marginal for B, right? And four is a conditional lambda given B. So in order to get the joint, you know that you can just get the marginal of B times the conditional of lambda given B. Okay? So that's why the joint prior that you're writing from um, knowledge from probability, you will know that it should be the product of the equation four and five once you write out the PD, uh, two PDFs. Step three will be the joint posterior, so we know that it should be proportional to the likelihood times the price. Okay, so just on my hands, it's good to stop getting well. Okay, so I bring us the uh, first page solution for step one, two, three. So just to make sure that uh, we're all similar pages here. Uh, the likelihood, as you can see, will only be in terms of lambda, because that's what equation three tells us. Okay, so you can write the L lambda V, and um, I start using the proportional sign, throwing away this, uh, the product of the yi factorial. You can keep them here, but you can um, also just throw them into the proportional sign. But eventually, you should get lambda to the power of sum of the yi, and then the exponent function, uh, negative n times lambda. And so that's what the contribution of the likelihood is. So that's for step one. Uh, step two here. Uh, we were talking about the joint prior should be the product of the conditional prior, lambda given B, times the marginal of B. Okay. Both of them are gamma, so we just need to follow closely what the gamma is. And I should just mention, keep in mind, that equation four, what's given to you, the random variable is lambda. Okay, So that's why you have uh, lambda here and lambda here. Okay. And then when you go to equation five, the random variable is B. That's why it's B here and B here. Okay? Sometimes um, it's easy to get confused about what is, what is the random variable here. So go back to what's given to you, the equations four and five. Once you simplify things, especially like, uh, like gamma, gamma function, the, this gamma function, yeah, they're all constant. And so you can put them into the proportional sign. And so you should be left with B times in exponent function negative lambda B plus B once you get all of the terms. So lastly, uh, on step three here, the joint posterior will be proportional to the likelihood times the prior. So we simply combine these two terms here. You should come up to something like this. So lambda raised to the power of sum of the yi. And you notice that I do plus one, minus one, because later it will be useful, but if you just ignore them for now, that's fine as well, times B, and then times in the exponent function, negative N lambda plus lambda B plus B. So you should come to this. You don't make any mistakes. So these are um, the first three steps. And the final 
step for you for step four is to get the full conditional posterior distribution for lambda and B separately. Okay? So give you a few more minutes to work on that and I share the results with you. And after class I will upload the solution to Moodle for you to check in yourself. Yeah, so both of the full conditional posterior distribution should be again. Yeah, you should be able to recognize that after you go to step four. So just a quick note that also can be yeah, you just need to work out the two parameters. Okay. Um, then step four, the two conditional posterior distribution for you to check, just to make sure that you get the same thing. So equation six gives you that uh, lambda, the full conditional posterior for that should be gamma sum of yi plus one and then m plus b. And then from equation seven, the full conditional posterior for b will be gamma two and then lambda plus one. Okay. So I will I will leave this on the screen. I'll walk around to answer your specific questions if you have any and make sure that when you're given a new situation, in this case it's actually extension of what we did before, but I give you new um, scenario where you need to put more uh, parameters to be random, you should be able to know how to derive the full condition of posterior distribution. Okay, the general step is you write the likelihood, you write the joint prior, from there you get to the joint posterior, and then finally from the joint posterior you look at the full condition of posterior for lambda and p in this case. So keep in mind that by definition full condition of posterior distribution for any parameter is that parameter given everything else? Whenever we start to say given everything else, everything else except for the parameter itself is constant. Okay? So that's why you're able to cancel out a lot of terms in the joint posterior if you only focus on one parameter. Okay? So take your time. I'll walk around to answer specific questions and I'll post this after class. So, um, in the previous step, when we had the joint posterior, mm -hmm. uh, why aren't we, um, is this approach of just freezing, like just treating the other random variable as a constant, is it the same as actually taking the joint and dividing it by the marginal, which is how you formally get the, um, the conditional? Yeah, so uh, step three, you can write out the joint posterior. And right. that's what we have right now. So in order to go from step three to step four, what you can do is say in step three, you just focus on what you have here. That's the joint. And so keep that in mind. And if we come to step four, in order to recognize the full conditional posterior distribution for lambda, we only need to collect any terms to the joint posterior about lambda. Right. So, but my yeah, question so was, why aren't we dividing by the marginal of uh, B? Yeah, so you don't need to do that because like what we covered in class, um, you, by definition, the, post the full condition of posterior distribution is you, can, you already have your B as given. Right, right. Uh, I see. Okay, so like, right, that's, that gets absorbed in the proportion. Yeah, yeah. So don't worry about that. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. The same goes for B given Y1 to Yn and lambda as well. Okay, all right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for the last two minutes, I will just try to go over the whole procedure again, so you know how to do things step by step. So, you might be given a model, right? We're going to give you the parameters in the model and then give you the prior. So, if you ask to derive the constitutional posterior distribution, you should first of all write the joint likelihood. If you write the joint likelihood, you write the joint prior. From there, you get to step three to be the joint posterior. And all of this needs to be careful. You have to do it step by step. Don't make mistakes. And then to go to the last step of getting the full conditional posterior, step four, for any parameter you're looking at, you just collect the terms in the joint posterior that is relevant to the parameter that you're working with. And then once you do that, typically you will be able to recognize what the distribution is. Okay, so. In class, so far, we have covered the cases that you're able to recognize what the distribution is, so you can use Gibbs sample. Because Gibbs sample requires your knowledge of the full conditional posterior distribution, and then you sample iteratively. There are other methods, like JAX is doing inside of JAX. They will take certain situations where the full conditional posterior is not known, 
might be some distribution that we don't know what it is. So later we're going to cover sampling techniques for those. But for now, and also for um, for the exams on Thursday, which sampler is what you need to know. Okay. How to derive it, how to sample it, and um, yeah, I think that will be um, the review. And on Thursday, 